We are now at question 7 of the CXC CSEC January 2014 General Paper 2 exam video solution. And in this question 7, we are told that the heights of a sample of seedlings were measured to the nearest centimeter and that the results were arranged in this frequency distribution table. And this frequency distribution table is incomplete and will be required to complete this table later on in this question. But first, let's talk about this frequency table a bit. Now, we see that these are the class intervals in which the height of the seedlings were arranged. So the first class interval is from 3 cm to 7 cm. The second one is 8 cm to 12 cm. And then 13 to 17, 18 to 22, 23 to 27. 28 to 32 and 33 to 37 and based on the data we see that the frequency of this first class is zero what this zero means is that there were no seedlings that measured between three and seven centimeters and the three here means that there were three seedlings that measured in this interval there were 12 seedlings measuring between 13 and 17 centimeters. There were 16 seedlings measuring between 18 and 22 centimeters. And there were 22 seedlings measuring between 23 and 27 centimeters. There were 18 seedlings measuring between 28 and 32 centimeters. And there were 14 seedlings measuring between 33 and 37 centimeters. And so, if we want the total number of seedlings in the sample, we would simply have to take the sum of the frequency values here. And we also have the class midpoints shown. So the class midpoint for the first class is 5. And this 5 can be calculated by taking the average of these two limit values. But theoretically, it must be calculated using the average of the boundary values. So what are the boundary values? The boundary values of a class are the values between which a seedling can be placed in a class and so for example in this first class the boundary values would be 2.5 and 7.5 the lower boundary value would be 2.5 and the upper boundary value would be 7.5 that means if a seedling measures greater than or equal to 2.5 centimeters but less than 7.5 centimeters it would be placed in this class for the second class, the boundary values are 7.5 and 12.5 centimeters. Therefore, if a ceiling measures greater than or equal to 7.5 centimeters but less than 12.5 centimeters, it will be placed in this class. And we will also observe that the upper boundary value of this first class coincides with the lower boundary value of this second class because the upper boundary value of this first class is 7.5 centimeters but the lower boundary value of the second class is 7.5 centimeters the upper boundary value of the second class is 12.5 centimeters but the lower boundary value of the third class is also 12.5 centimeters and so the classes intersect at the boundary values we should also notice that the distribution of a table is very uniform and this is revealed in the fact that the difference between the lower limit values is 5 centimeters. That is, the lower limit values increase by 5 from class to class. And so, for example, the lower limit value in the first class is 3, and we increase that by 5 to 8 in the second class. And then this 8 is increased by 5, and the trend continues. The same thing happens in the upper limit values. The upper limit value of the first class is 7 and that is increased by 5 to 12 in the second class. And so we see that the distribution of the table is spread out by 5 centimeters. We'll also notice that the midpoint values increase by 5 from class to class. Now that set of observation can prove useful when solving the question. But now let's go to the questions. Now the first question wants us to calculate the number of seedlings in the sample. And as I've said, this should be given as the sum of the frequency values as I've described before. So let's show that the number of seedlings will be equal to the sum of the frequency values. 
And so when we total these frequency values, the total here is 85. And so the number of seedlings in this distribution is 85. 85 seedlings in the sample. The second part wants us to analyze the class interval 8 to 12. And that class interval is the second class interval here. Class interval with the limit values 8 to 12 centimeters. And the first thing we're required to state is the lower limit. In other words, what is the lower limit of the second class, 8 to 12 centimeters? And as I described before, that value would be the 8 centimeters as appeared in the class interval here. The limit values are the values as they appear in the class interval. And so the lower limit value is 8 centimeter and the upper limit value is 12 centimeters in this second class. The second question is asking us for the upper boundary value. And as I've described before, the upper boundary value would be the upper boundary for which a seedling can be placed in this class. And that value for the second class is 12.5 centimeters. A seedling has to be less than 12.5 centimeters to be placed in this second class, but it would also have to be greater than or equal to 7.5 centimeters. And so 7.5 centimeters would be the lower boundary value for this second class. The third part wants us to state the class width and the class width is defined as the upper boundary value minus the lower boundary value. That is the width of the class interval because it represents the range of values between which a ceiling can be placed in this class. And so it is 12.5 centimeters minus 7.5 centimeters and that works out to be 5 centimeters. And we also notice that this 5 centimeters matches the distribution of the values in this table. The lower limit values are increasing by 5 centimeters. The upper limit values are also increasing by 5 centimeters and the midpoint values are increasing by 5 centimeters. And so the width of each class is also 5 centimeters. In any case, this is a class width. And so that's the answer for that part. Let's move down now to part C. Now part C wants us to complete the table and we are required firstly to complete the midpoint column. And this is easy because we see that the midpoint values are increasing by 5. So all we need to do is to continue to increase these values by 5. And so from 15 we add 5 for the next class. That will be 20. And then we add 5 more. That's 25. We add 5 more. That's 30. We add 5 more. And so that's 35. The next part wants us to complete the interval that would appear after the 33 to 37 interval. This is the 33 to 37 interval. And we have to complete this row to show the values that would appear for the next class interval. And the next class interval would be 38 to 42. To get the lower limit of the next class, we simply add 5 to 33 and that would be 38. And we also add 5 to 37 to get the upper limit which is 42. For the midpoint value, again we simply add 5 and that will take us to 40. So 40 is the midpoint value for this class and there are no ceilings measuring between 38 and 42 centimeters and so the frequency for this interval is 0. And so that's it. We have completed the table. Let's move down now to part D. Now part D wants us to draw a frequency polygon for this frequency distribution. And we're asked to use a scale of 2 cm to a height of 5 cm on a horizontal axis and a scale of 2 cm to 5 seedlings on a vertical axis. Now a frequency polygon is a line graph that is obtained by plotting the midpoint values against the frequency values. So we will place our midpoint values on the horizontal axis and place our frequency values on the vertical axis. And then we plot the coordinates. So to get the line graph, we need only the midpoint column and the frequency column. And this is our graph. And it is scaled to 2 centimeters to 5 units on the vertical axis. And also 2 centimeters to 5 units on the horizontal axis. And so now we are going to plot the point 5, 0, 10, 3, 15, 12, 2016, 25, 22, 
30, 18, 35, 14, and 40, 0. These are the coordinates of the points that we're going to plot for our frequency polygon. And this is it. The first point is 5, 0. The second point is 10, 3. 10 is the height and 3 is a frequency. The third point is 15, 12. 15 is a height, 12 is a frequency. The next point is 20, 16. 20, 16. 20 is the height and 16 is a frequency. The next point is 25, 22. 25 is the height and 22 is a frequency. The next point is 30, 18. 30, 18. 30 is the height and 18 is a frequency. After that, we have 35, 14. 35, 14. 35 is a height, 14 is a frequency. And then we have the last point, 40, 0. 40 is the height and 0 is a frequency. And so when we draw straight lines between these points, we draw a straight line graph, and that's our straight line graph. And to complete the frequency polygon, we close the points on the horizontal axis. And this is it. And that's our frequency polygon for this frequency distribution. So that is the end of part D and the end of question 7. And we'll do question 8 in the next video. See you then.